hello welcome back to my channel i just got a bunch of test results back from a bunch of different gut health tests and it turns out apparently i have pretty darn good gut health very good diversity of my microbiome this is overall very good very exciting news for my gut and so today i thought i would make a little video about first of all why microbial diversity in your gut is so important but then also all of the various things that i do throughout my day throughout my life that help boost the diversity in my microbiome so that you guys can also have very diverse guts as well. So one of the keys to having a healthy, resilient gut is to have high microbial diversity in your gut. This essentially means you have a high number of different species of bacteria thriving, flourishing throughout the entirety of your intestine. And the various species of gut bacteria serve different functions in the body from helping metabolize food to absorb nutrients, to reducing inflammation, to protecting your brain health, producing serotonin, etc. So the more variety you have in species of bacteria, basically the more good guys you have on your team in your body and the more efficiently your body can accomplish all of the functions that it needs to accomplish. Lower microbial diversity, so fewer different species of bacteria in your gut, is associated with a lot of different health issues from inflammatory bowel disease to type 1 diabetes to obesity, malnutrition, certain cancers, and a lot of other health concerns. So not only does a diversity in microbiome help with overall health and reducing risk of disease, it also helps with things like being able to digest a wider variety of foods. If you have trouble digesting certain kinds of plants, it may just be because you don't have enough of the right bacteria and enzymes in your gut to be able to handle that. And so the more you can promote microbiome diversity, the better you might be able to start tolerating those kinds of plants. And how you would go about like healing your gut in order to do that is kind of a much more extensive thing. But essentially, if you can start to promote more microbial diversity, you may be able to start eating foods that otherwise would not be driving too well with your body. So without further ado, let's dive in to all of the various tips and tricks and things that I do to help promote microbial diversity in your gut. So this first tip probably won't come as a surprise in a video about gut health, but it is to take a good quality probiotic. Now, here's the interesting thing about probiotics is that they are actually less able to directly add more diversity to your gut microbiome and more able to create an environment in your gut that is more conducive to an increase in diversity in your gut microbiome. So it's kind of like fertilizer for the soil and then once the other good bacteria are all in there, then they can flourish, if that kind of makes sense. It's not just like you take a probiotic, the bacteria is in your gut, and then all of a sudden it flourishes. That's not quite how it works. And they do certainly shift the gut microbiome and promote diversity in some ways. Like there was one study done in horses that showed that taking a probiotic did increase microbial diversity. But where good quality probiotics really shine is in essentially like prepping the gut to be able to flourish once you do the rest of these tips that will help improve microbial diversity. So that's why I wanted to include it as tip number one, because it's like the, the prep stage for the rest of it. And if you're looking for a good quality probiotic, as always, I highly recommend Seed. They are sponsoring this video, so big shout out to them. I have been taking Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic for years, and I absolutely love it. I absolutely attribute my amazing gut health results partially to taking this so regularly. But the DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic from Seed is developed for systemic health benefits beyond just digestive health, which is why they are my absolute favorite brand of probiotic on the market. It's the first in a pipeline of next generation clinically studied products. It is a 24 strain broad spectrum probiotic and prebiotic formula, hence the name Symbiotic. And it's developed for not just digestive health, but also immune health, cardiovascular health, skin health, all the various things that improved gut health can also carry over into. It is designed with all of those things in mind. Whereas most probiotic companies only consider digestive health when they are formulating their probiotics. And then my other favorite thing about the Seed Symbiotic is they use capsule and capsule technology. So there's an outer capsule that has a prebiotic formula, and I'll talk about prebiotics 
in a minute, but they help feed the good bacteria. And then the probiotic capsule is inside of this larger capsule and that helps protect it as it goes through the digestive tract. So it's actually able to deliver a lot of the probiotics to your actual colon, whereas a lot of other probiotics on the market just dissolve in your stomach acid. And so it doesn't actually make it to your digestive tract. And so what this means is that while a lot of the probiotics that have been studied don't actually show a huge increase in microbial diversity from taking them, since they don't actually reach the digestive tract, like it's kind of no wonder, but because the seed capsules are designed to make it all the way through your colon and actually bring the probiotics to your intestines, they might actually do a much better job at promoting microbial diversity as well as all of the other amazing health benefits that you get from taking a probiotic. So that's pretty nifty. I have been taking it for years and I now have test results to show that my gut health is great. So I can't recommend this enough. If you wanna check it out, you can use my code FITANDNERDY25 to get yourself 25% off of your first order. I'll leave a link down in the description box below. So go check it out. And without further ado, let's go. To the next tip. So I am currently eating some chocolate covered almonds, which to be fair, probably not the best example of this, but cacao has prebiotic fiber, which is my next tip. Just consume prebiotic foods. The beneficial bacteria in your gut require food. Prebiotics are the, the pre to the probiotic. So it, it feeds the bacteria. Prebiotics are, are bacteria food essentially. And prebiotics are essentially able to bypass digestion and make it all the way into the intestines. And there, the bacteria metabolize and ferment the prebiotics and that is what helps them thrive. Most common types of prebiotics are resistant starch. So you find this a lot in like cooked and then cooled starches. So like cooked and cooled potatoes, cooked and cooled rice. Then you also have inulin and pectin. And they're found in a lot of different plant foods. So dandelion greens, Jerusalem artichoke, bananas, apples, garlic, onion, leek, asparagus, chicory root cacao and different strains of bacteria eat different kinds of prebiotics so not every prebiotic food or supplement is going to give you the same effect so it is important to include variety and diversity of prebiotic sources as well and this is something in my diet that i am aware of but not something that i really actively try to do because what I found is that if you're already aiming for having a variety of foods, particularly a variety of fruits and vegetables, you're gonna get a lot of prebiotic fiber in your diet anyway, but it is something to be aware of and have on your radar. Next up we have fermented foods. Fermentation process, fermented foods is essentially food, bacteria. Bacteria do its thing. Do things to the food. Kind of depends on the food. Basically, a fermented food is it's food plus bacteria. Good bacteria, hopefully. So, an example of that is kombucha. I drink like one kombucha a day, but also yogurt, sauerkraut, kimchi, all that good stuff. There's a cool study done where they took 36 adults and randomly assigned them into two different 10 week diets. And one was a higher fiber diet. So they like almost doubled their fiber intake. And then the other one was a high fermented food intake. And they had, I think six servings of fermented foods a day, which is not like a, that much for serving of fermented foods. And they found that after 10 weeks on each of these diets, the group that was eating much higher fermented foods had a much bigger increase in microbial diversity in their guts. And interestingly, just 5% of the new microbes that were detected in their guts were microbes that were actually in the fermented foods that they were eating. So they had this massive explosion of new good bacteria that wasn't necessarily detected in the actual fermented foods that they were consuming. So this kind of goes back and suggests what I was saying earlier about taking an actual like probiotic capsule is that these bacteria that you're ingesting kind of prime your body to be a better place for good bacteria to like settle and flourish. So it's not just like a one-to-one, -one, eat the bacteria, bacteria are now colonizing your intestines. It's more like you consume the bacteria and it helps create a better, healthier environment for 
other bacteria to flourish as well. So I'm trying to get in at least one serving of fermented foods a day. It's not always kombucha. I do have yogurt in my smoothies in the mornings. I like to have sauerkraut with my food when I remember. I don't often remember, but I try to remember. So basically, fermented foods equal happy, diverse, bad bacteria. My next tip, which I am applying to my dinner tonight and try to apply very regularly to my life is eat the rainbow. Aim to eat a wide variety of fruits and vegetables. The more colors, the better. Different colors essentially mean different nutrients, which means it is going to feed different strains of bacteria. So if you're only eating like brown foods, you're not feeding all of the bacteria that would thrive on more orange foods or more purple foods, etc. Aiming to eat a bunch of different colors is really just a great way to ensure diversity in your diet. And then also foods that are very colorful are also very high in polyphenols. Polyphenols are secondary metabolites of plants, which essentially mean they're compounds produced by plants that aren't like necessary for the plant's growth and reproduction, but polyphenols have been shown to positively impact the gut microbiome. According to this study, polyphenols may act in the gut microbiota to favor the increase of beneficial bacteria and hamper the increase of pathogenic bacteria. So basically helpful for growing the good bacteria and minimizing the bad bacteria. And then this other review showed that recent studies support that dietary polyphenols that reach the gut microbiome as well as the metabolites that they generate can modify and produce variations in the gut microbiome community by exhibiting prebiotic effects and antimicrobial action against pathogenic intestinal microflora. So again, just supporting that polyphenols can in multiple ways help produce the growth of good bacteria and minimize bad bacteria. And then there's actually a really cool reciprocal relationship where not only do polyphenols help the growth of good bacteria, but the good bacteria can actually help with the absorption of the polyphenols. So it feeds into each other in a positive loop, which is great. So get your colors, make your diet full of rainbows. So I just made the most scrumptious looking breakfast bagel for lunch and i haven't made this in a while which brings me to my next tip which is diversity 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 changing up your diet getting as many different things into your diet as possible and this is because different bacteria strains thrive on different foods so the wider variety of diet you have the wider variety of bacteria you're going to be feeding we have lost so much diversity in our diet in the last like 100 years thanks to commercial food production like about 75 percent of processed food has corn in it. So if you're eating a lot of processed foods and you're not making an effort to get variety in your diet, you're probably just mostly eating corn. So some of my favorite ways to encourage diversity in your diet, first thing is seasonal dieting. I've been making a whole series about this throughout the year. And this just involves changing up your diet throughout the seasons to more closely mimic what we would have eaten ancestrally depending on the season. And this encourages a huge variety because you go from being a lot more animal-based, protein and fat heavy in the winter to being much more plant-based and carb focused in the summer and you cycle through that and so you inherently get a wider variety of foods and especially if you're eating seasonally in the sense of like eating the foods that are in season where you live, then you are gonna be like naturally rotating through different fruits and vegetables. This might be too big for me to take a bite out of. But also you don't have to eat seasonally in order to get variety in your diet. You could, for example, just spend different periods of time in different styles of eating, or you can just focus on eating foods that are in season. As long as you're focusing on getting a variety in and not just going back to the same staple foods over and over and over, like oatmeal with blueberries for breakfast and then chicken with broccoli and cauliflower for dinner. First of all, that'd be really sad. Second of all, there's not a lot of variety in that if you're just repeating the same things over and over. So for a lot of people, repeating the same foods over and over makes it really easy to stick to your macro goals, in which case, if you wanna do that, I'd encourage you to, you know, week to week change it up or even month to month change it up so you can still you know meal prep for the week and eat the same thing for the week it's more important to just change it throughout the year and then on the flip side it's also important to not unnecessarily limit your diet for prolonged periods of time because if you cut out certain food groups for 
an extended period of time, you may lose some of the bacteria that are helpful in digesting those foods. And if you go back to eating them, you might have a harder time digesting them. And obviously sometimes you have to restrict your diet in certain ways for like certain healing protocols or something like that. I'm not saying don't do that because healing your body overall takes priority and will ultimately have a more positive impact on your gut health, but doing that unnecessarily may cause more harm than good. Next tip is get into nature. I'm just in my backyard because it was supposed to like rain today, so today was not gonna be a go out in nature day, but it's not raining right now. So we're out here in the grass, in the dirt. Because here's the thing, nature is dirty. Dirt has bacteria. Not all good bacteria, but some good bacteria. And here's the thing, we live in a sanitized world, especially in the last couple years, like literally everything completely sanitized, no bacteria, good or bad. Our food doesn't come with dirt or bugs on it anymore, unless you go to the farmer's market, then you're getting some good dirt on your food. But years ago, like hundreds of years ago, our hands used to just be dirty all day. And studies that compare populations around the world that live in more rural areas compared to those that live in more urban areas show that people who have basically more frequent contact with nature, with the dirt, on the ground have higher microbial diversity. Kind of makes sense that the more often you are exposed to good bacteria, the more you're going to end up with in your system. One study even showed that the environment may contribute more to your microbiome than genetics. Studies have found that unrelated individuals who share the same household or living environment have more similar gut microbiomes than related individuals who don't share a household. So that just shows that like, even if your genetics have set up your gut in a certain way, if you can change your environment, get out in nature more, you can still foster a very healthy, diverse gut microbiome. And then one review tells us that frequent contact of people with the natural environment can increase the diversity of the human microbiome, promote the immune balance, and protect the individual from allergy and inflammation. And this other study demonstrated that rubbing your hands in soil and plant material can increase the beneficial microbial diversity of the gut. So basically, do what your parents told you to do when you were two, go outside, and play in the dirt. I'm just out here right now doing a little bit of like mobility stretchy stuff before I head to the gym. So I am on my way to the gym to go get a little workout which brings me to my next point which is that exercise is really good for promoting microbiome diversity. Exercise can essentially modify gut microbiota by its positive impact on energy homeostasis which is essentially the biological process in which the cells use your body to like regulate energy production, energy expenditure, and food intake. Basically everything is connected. What do you know? And so your body having to use energy in different ways for exercise is connected to your gut health. Recent research has shown that moderate to high levels of exercise can improve microbial diversity and enhance the number of beneficial microbial species. And then there's also a slight difference between how longer duration and higher intensity exercise affect the gut versus lower intensity. So basically higher intensity or a lot of exercise allows for more oxygen to reach the brain and the bloodstream. And this essentially just creates a fantastic environment for good bacteria to flourish. And then with low intensity exercise, it can influence the GI tract by reducing the transient stool time, which is essentially how long it takes for your food to go from your stomach and into the toilet. And having this amount of time be like a healthy and appropriate amount of time is actually really important for the gut health because it means that things are passing through at an appropriate rate for the correct bacteria to flourish in there. Another huge thing you can do is managing stress. So whether that's adding in things like meditation, journaling, breath work, therapy, working on time management skills, maybe cutting out toxic people from your life, whatever it looks like for you to help reduce stress is going to help improve your microbial diversity in your gut. So studies show that chronic stress is associated with a decrease in microbiome diversity and increased intestinal permeability. This is partially because stress alters the intestinal mucosa permeability, and then it can also change the cytokine secretion. There's research 
research to show that stress may significantly change the community structure and activity of the microbiota in the gut and one hypothesis for this is that noradrenaline and norepinephrine hormones which happen when you are stressed can fuel the changes in the gut microbiome directly and the idea is supported by animal studies in which norepinephrine has been observed to alter the gene expression of certain bacteria so essentially the more stressed you are the more stress that is in your body, the more likely it is to negatively alter the composition of your gut microbiome. Now, this would not be a misfit nerdy video about health if there weren't a discussion about the importance of sleep. If you've been around long enough, you probably saw this tip coming. Little buggies in your gut gotta eat, they also gotta sleep. I don't, I don't think I actually technically sleep. But like there are things that happen when we rest that helps them do the things that they need to do. Sleep is restorative for our body in myriad ways. But also sleep deprivation can cause inflammation, it can cause increase in stress hormones, it can cause all sorts of bad things that will also kill off the good bacteria or promote the growth bad bacteria. So do your bedtime routine, get your full eight hours or however much sleep you need to feel fully rested and restored the next day, and your gut bacteria will thank you. So in one particular study by Benedict et al, researchers followed nine healthy volunteers, all of whom reported having good consistent levels of sleep, and then they gave them regularly timed meals leading up to the study, and this is just like an important control to eliminate other variables that could skew the results. And the participants stayed four nights at a sleep facility and had their sleep monitored. And during two of the nights, they were allowed to sleep a full restful eight and a half hours. And on the other two nights, they were restricted to only four and a half hours of sleep. And the data that they collected from the study showed that not getting sufficient sleep for just two nights significantly affected the participants gut flora. The types of bacteria in the gut didn't necessarily change, but the levels of each type of bacteria changed dramatically and certain microbes reduced by almost 50%. That's crazy. Two nights of sleep deprivation could be killing off like 50% of certain strains of good bacteria in your gut. Now, to be fair, I don't know how quickly normal levels of that kind of bacteria can get restored after the fact. It could just be like one more good night's sleep and you're good to go. But either way, killing off your good bacteria, probably not something you want to be doing. So get your sleep. Go to bed. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Good night. The next morning. Last little thing I wanna to touch on really quick is three really common things that can kill the good bacteria in your gut. So stuff that can reduce microbial diversity. And these are alcohol. So like when you drink alcohol, you're kind of just murdering your gut microbiome. And that's not to say you can like never, never ever, ever drink or you'll never have a healthy gut. gut. Like I'm not trying to, trying to fear monger here, but like the more you drink, the more healthy bacteria you're killing off. So trade-offs. Next is antibiotic use. Antibiotics are literally antibiotics, the opposite of probiotics. They just decimate your gut. They kill the bad bacteria and the good bacteria. Again, this isn't to say you should never use antibiotics. Like if you're very sick and you need antibiotics, like do it. But it's just important to be aware of the side effects so that if you do need to use antibiotics, you can do everything you can afterwards to promote getting that good bacteria back into your system and helping it flourish. And the last very commonly used thing that can have a negative impact on the healthy bacteria in your gut is hormonal birth control. Now, again, don't want a fear monger here like your body, your choice. I chose to stay on hormonal birth control for a while after learning about all of the potential negative side effects and like that was the right choice for me then. I'm off of it now it's the right choice for me now so like whatever you want to do fine just be aware of the potential side effects that you can do what you can to work against that so like following all the other tips that i had in this video to promote microbial diversity in your gut if you are on hormonal birth control and those are my top tips for promoting microbial diversity in your microbiome if you guys have any other tips to add please do leave them down in the comments below and if you want more videos about gut health or anything related to this also let me know or just generally let me know what kind of videos 
you want to see. Make sure you do check out Seed, linked in the description box below to help promote a healthier gut and healthier body overall. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does support me and my channel. I really genuinely appreciate it. Please share this video with your friends, your family, and your neighbors. If you want to see more content from me, all about health and fitness, you can check it out over here. To see future videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the little notification bell so you get notified when I post a video, and I will see you very soon. Bye!